Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. And uh, in today's episode, I'm very pleased to be joined by author Belinda Farrell. And in our talk today, we're going to uh, examine the ideas about self-forgiveness and how that can lead into inner peace and to talk about her book, uh, which is called Find Your Friggin' Joy. And we can hear uh, a bit more about that and and how she focuses on, uh, you know, helping ourselves to heal. So uh, very pleased to have you, Belinda, and thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. I I really feel honored and excited to be here. Well, that that's wonderful, and and I'm really glad to have you here. You know, looking over, uh, you know, what you do, and and in our previous talks, and and your book, you know, and everything that you're doing really focuses in helping people to find their inner peace, and that's really what. Uh, you know, my focus and in my work and and on this podcast is all about is how do we help people find themselves and, uh, you know, find what works for inner peace for them. Absolutely. I mean, we're really a conglomerate, you know, of all different races and colors and creeds and religions, but we're all joined by this unified field. We, We feel things to people all over the world. So the more that we can connect with our own compassion and forgiveness, the more we're connected to that whole. Well, definitely. Um, And I do like that idea of that connection because that's the way that I tend to focus. You know, we are not islands amongst ourselves, and we are part of that whole. Um, Can you uh, tell us a a bit about yourself and what led you into uh, working on healing and uh, the self-forgiveness piece? Well, you know, I think we're all trying to find a little part of ourselves. And when I was in my 40s, I was trying to play catch-up. I I kind of was led all my life by what people wanted me to do or taught me how to think or and then I was just finally on my own and I wanted to find out what what caused me to have the fears that I had because I hadn't had the opportunity myself to really speak up and and delve into um, things that I was just afraid of. So I took fire walks with Tony Robbins when I was in my, yeah, in my early 40s. I don't know what drew me to that, but it was like, (laughs) this is impossible. How can this happen? But then when you do it and you do it successfully, you say to yourself, well, if I've done this, walked on 2,000 degrees of hot coals, then what else could I do in my life? It's a metaphor. And what came up for me is that I wanted to drive a race car. I'd always wanted to drive a race car. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but, but then I just thought, okay, well, let me go find out if I can, you know, take part in some kind of class. And Tony um, teaches you a mantra that if you say you can't, then you must. You, there is no can't. So, and if you must, then you will. And so I enrolled in a Grand Prix road racing course at Sears Point, which is out in the Sonoma Valley. And I guess I had a little bit of talent, unbeknownst to me. And at the end of the course, um, I was hired to drive for Buick and Cadillac in New York. And that's how my stunt driving career started. And I came back and learned more skills, you know, how how to twirl a car, how to do terrorist driving, you know, just all those fun things that you do on the road, right? Right. <laughs> and, exactly. Um, <laughs> and it was just the like a rebirth of just something that I never would have dreamed that I could do had I not done those firewalks. So it's like breaking out of your comfort zone, and yet I still was afraid of water. And it was about 10 years later that I started going to Hawaii and taking classes in hypnosis and past life regression 
that led me to just be on the big island where I I had to face my fear of the water because there you are surrounded by water. And I started having dreams of dolphins teaching me how to swim. Um, and I don't know where that came from, but they were recruiting me to come out into the ocean. And I had to get over the fear of the water to do that. And so finally I did, and they, I'm, I've been swimming with them now for 25 years and taking people to swim in the ocean to meet these wild dolphins. And it absolutely transformed their life, and it has transformed mine as well. So it's like embracing those fears, whatever you have that you're afraid of. You really just need to, if you want to, you know, go full forward and break the illusion of that fear because it will take you to the other side and to something just far more greater than you could imagine. Right. And it, it's fascinating to hear your story, you know, of going from trying to find yourself and fire walk into being a, a stunt driver who's now swimming with wild dolphins. I know. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, I'm sure people are, are listening and like, well, how can I live out there, you know, a dream like that? But, uh, it, it, it's oh. fascinating because, you know, I have spent some time in uh, with dolphins, but they've been in their, you know, areas and their own tanks, and you know, you're allowed to go in and kind of play with them. But I can't imagine the, the experience of actually being out in the ocean with them. Oh, you know, it, and, and it's, it gives it's me chills world. when I even think of it now because we call them in. I t Telepathically, I can think about them now and talk to them about the people I'm bringing next year because I usually go in August and September. And and I can feel that they're they're waiting for those people to come, you know, that I that I talk to them and they come and they they transform them. It's really just incredible. Hmm. What well, what do you think it is the key factor that becomes transformative, you know, I, I can think of a, a lot of beautiful things of, of swimming with wild dolphins in their environment, but mm -hmm. what, what do you think would be the key in, in being so transformative? Well, it's, it's frequencies. They're, they're in a different frequency than we are and their brains are more developed than, than ours. They've been used by scientists, you know, for lots of experiments to find out why they, you know, are so advanced. And I believe when we enter into that frequency, because they transmit that through the water, and it changes us. They see us as a piece of uh, sheet music that's out of, you know, it's out of harmony. And because of all the anger and the fear and the hurt and all the sadness, and so they want to sonar that away from us so that what remains is our unconditional love that mirrors theirs because they're, they're operating in a frequency of theta and alpha. And we have that beta, the self-talk. They don't have that. So they're already in this high theta state, this meditative state. And when all of the you know, the cloaks and daggers are removed from us and we're in this place of unconditional love, then we're just, you know, we're one with them. And it's just, it's intoxicating. It's like a drug. You fall in love with the person that's next to you. <laughs> it's really, right. it's, it's, it's amazing. You're in that high frequency. So I, I think that's what the allure is, swimming with them, because you're just so happy. They're, you're part of that joy. Regardless of what has happened in your life, you you know, you know, just kind of coexist in this, this bubble. And it lasts. You know, I keep going back year after year. This will be my 19th year of taking people to experience this. That's amazing. Now, when you, you speak of, of all of that transformation, for those who can't have that opportunity, what would be some of your advice or tips to help people who want that but can't get it in that way? Well, well, how, how might people find that? 
Well, again, this is why I do the HUNA, which is a, a self-healing process, and it's explained in my book. I go through the step-by-step -step formula of how I healed my back without using surgery and connecting to the higher self and forgiving ourselves from the past memories that we've been carrying with us. So we can do those kinds of things to do our own self-healing and clean ourselves on the inside. And the other thing is the reconnective healing. And I also take part in that if they can't um, come to me personally here in Santa Cruz then I can do uh, long-distance healing, um, or they can find somebody who is a reconnective healing practitioner in their own hometown and get a session, because what that does is raise your frequencies as well. And it's all about really going from a dense, low density where you're, you know, miserable or fearful or angry or, you know, feeling those low emotions and raising them up, kind of cleaning yourself and, and looking out through a different lens so that you can see the good in the world. You can see what, what is good because it's coming from you on the inside. Everything is a projection from the inside, as, as we've right. been told, and, and that is so true. So when we clean the part of us that sees the ugly, then the beautiful emerges. So through reconnective healing, that's one way to polish and, and to get to a higher frequency, and then also doing the self-healing of, of HUNA. Those are just my suggestions right. that, that have worked for me. I mean, I don't have all the answers. Nobody does. <laughs> exactly. God help us um, all if good, huh? <laughs> if, if somebody had all the answers, it would be amazing. But Oh, my um, gosh, yeah. But, I mean, you have to see what works for you. And if it resonates with you, then great. If something else resonates with you, all the better. Whatever you believe in, you have to believe in it wholeheartedly, and and so it is. Right. So a lot of what I'm hearing you saying is, you know, looking at those areas of our lives that have uh, been within us, that have allowed us to disconnect from self and others, mm -hmm. is that what you're talking about that needs yes. that healing power of a reconnection? Right. Yeah, I mean, everything, we we go through our lives and we we have problems. A lot of it is carried in by our ancestors and our DNA. And the problems we, we experience in new, we experience new things, but they're based on the past and maybe our past failures and the things that we've kind of churned into the mix. And our conscious mind, you know, tries to um, solve these problems, but they can't. Our, our thoughts are all imb embedded with, you know, the painful memories of persons and people and things. And so the intellect alone can't solve these problems because right. the intellect just manages them. And so that's how right. people start using addictions and cover-ups and things just to kind of push things down. But when we go inside and we do this cleaning, which is just four little phrases, it's just as things come up, you just say with yourself, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. I forgive you. Thank you. Just those four phrases. You're connecting with your higher self. And what happens is that you neutralize it. You neutralize the way you were looking at that problem. And then something wonderful happens. It not only gets neutralized, but it gets released. And then mm -hmm. you have a brand new slate, like you've just erased the blackboard. And those things go into like a void. It goes into the akasha, into the creative process of, of the purple black. And so you then get to have this void filled with light or new right. ideas or new creativity. You get to start from zero again. So you and, could and say those phrases to yourself all day long and you would feel 100% better. Yeah, and, and that's what's amazing, and 
I've seen it in, in my own life and, and, you know, people that I've worked with, but it, it still amazes me when, you know, a, a very simple phrase, mm-hmm. yet so powerful, can actually be that transforming. That that if we oh. can say that phrase and, and believe that, how that can really change who we are, and, and it seems so simple. I know, and your ego, the ego, our ego, wants us to think that it's got to be more complicated than that. It can't be that simple. And so, you know, we shrug it off, not realizing that that is the key. It's just truth is simple. Right. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think we tend, as, as humans, and I like how, you, you know, you put that onto the ego, that, you know, we tend to complicate things, and, and we right. want the complication. You know, and uh, it it can be this simple, yeah. which probably leads back into you know when we look at dolphins or nature in general, who do live much more simply than we do, uh, you know, can find more of a a piece about them than we do within our complications. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. I go when I go on my trips. I go and I come back with all this clarity. I mean, I've been able to resolve you know, deep issues and problems. I come home and and a lot of the things that I thought were important just kind of fall away. And you get this clarity, this laser-like thinking, and you get a lot more done. You get to make better decisions. So it's, it's really just um, my drug of choice. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, and and I, I think one of the more difficult pieces of this that that I've found through the years is that piece of the self-forgiveness that, yeah. you know, people tend to be somewhat willing to admit their wrongs. Uh, people tend to be very open in, um, you know, forgiving others for, you know, what they may have done. Um, but when it comes to ourselves, that that seems to be the big sticking point. Yeah. And really all it is 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 letting go of the agenda that you presently have, which are like cords. They're like sticky cords. The Hawaiians called it aka. And it's hmm. and when I did my C D I have a C D called Chant and Forgiveness and it was produced about twenty years ago. And it allows you to put people down below you starting with parents and ancestors and friends and authority figures and all the kinds of things in your life that that you are connected to. And you're up on a platform looking down below you on the stage and you're making them very tiny. And you're seeing or feeling these cords that have connected you to them. And they, if they're left unchecked, you could feel like a mummy all dressed up in cords or like the inside of a golf ball. Mm-hmm. And you drag that stuff with you wherever you go. In the Hawaiian tradition, they would cut cords every single night at sunset. They would not let mm-hmm. that accumulate inside the body because it would be like you never washing your teeth. How would that look or feel? Right. right. The, plaque, the plaque would just keep building up. And so every night they'd gather as a family in the old tradition and they'd they'd let go of their hatred or their anger, whatever had happened during the day that would go down into the water as the sun, you know, melted into the water. So would their their cords. Because the most important thing for them at that time, they didn't have a lot of mental illness on the island, was to reach their higher self. And reaching the higher self would be the, the, the total objective of their life. When right. I healed my back, I had to reach my higher self because the higher self, once it is reached, can come down into the physical body and heal you right. of anything. And I healed within four days, having let go of some of these memories that I had been holding back that I didn't even know I had inside of me. And once I started to think of myself climbing trees again, because you have to have a strong back to climb trees. Definitely. I, yeah. My little unconscious mind 
would get excited that it could climb trees, and so it would send that desire and that image up to the higher self, which now could bring it down into my physical body because the memories that were stuck there opened up and the pipeline was now free for the desire to reach the higher self. It's it's all in my book mm-hmm. of, of how that um, how that was accomplished. Right, and so it, it really seems that you know if if we can empty ourselves of all of those things that that hold us, you know, physically, and I, I guess you know hold us to to the ground in in that sense, then we can allow. Uh, you know, that higher power to enter because we're open and receptive to that once we have let go of of the physical. Yes, that's right. And and it is just allowing ourselves to let things come up. And there's a ha breath that you can do because that gives permission for the unconscious mind to open up the box that's been holding all these old memories. And so it's a lot of ha, deep ha breathing, like 10 minutes of it at least, and just letting come up what comes up from your treasure trove. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so uh, about your book, it, it's a very interesting title. And uh, what what um. What was your process for, you know, coming up with the book and, and how have you been able to, you know, feel that, that you can help people through the message of the book? Well, I never really, here again, I never really wanted to write a book. Um, just like I never wanted to go into the water. I was afraid of water all my life. So I had to step out of my comfort zone. And what helped with the book is um, my son died. And oh, he sorry. he took his life. Um, uh, seven years ago, and he also had back issues, but he had surgeries, and I never had a surgery. I wanted to do it, you know, the other way, but he wouldn't do it that way. His dad was also an orthopedic surgeon, so he was getting influenced, you know, to just go the Western route, and he was in pain constantly, so he was dependent on painkillers and drugs and that's what finally, um, you know, took his life. Yeah. And after that, I, I couldn't even do my own healing. I mean, I was just devastated and, well, you can understand. And then I also lost all of my money in a Ponzi scheme at the same time. So I had to sell everything that I had. It was just a very difficult time. And a friend took me to see a movie called The Living Matrix, and it featured Dr. Eric Pearl, Dr. Bruce Lipton, some other people who were in the alternative medicine field, and he was showing me how he could, um, just with raising these frequencies, heal this little boy that was in a wheelchair from cerebral palsy, and I watched it, and it was just like a bell went off in my head. I said, I've got to learn how to do this. So when I came back home, I got a a session myself with a reconnective healing practitioner. She didn't know a thing about me. She didn't know anything about my sadness or anything. After the session, which only lasted about a half hour, uh, she never touched me. Um, My grief was lifted, and I felt light again, and I felt joyful again. It was like a miracle to me because I'd been just in such a heavy state of sadness and grief. And so then, yeah, then I had another couple of sessions and I had my reconnection done, which are a series of drawings that are traced on your acupuncture points, taking you back to really your soul level of connection to your higher self. And after you only do that process once in a lifetime. And I had that done And shortly after that, I heard the message inside me, you're going to write a book. And I had no objection whatsoever. I just said, fine. Okay, I'll get started. And it was just like that was the key that, again, accelerated me onto my soul path. I had to write that book. And so it took three years. And um, 
I did it willingly and lovingly and joyfully and and the 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 title came to me because I had a friend who helped me with my dolphin seminars, but she was always a little sad all the time she was she just was sad and I remember we were watching this turtle try to get out of the rocks it was trapped in this in the rocks, and the surf wasn't allowing it to go through. And she was just lamenting at this poor turtle. Oh, poor turtle, poor turtle. And I looked at her and I said, would you just find your friggin' joy? And she burst out laughing. And it was the first time that I would ever gotten anything out of her that was joyful. And I never forgot wow. it. And I thought, right. if I can allow people to, you know, finally burst out of their sadness, then maybe I've got something here. And, and that, that's such a, a wonderful story, you know, in finding that title of the book because I, I know it, it gives me pause when I look at that, but also it does put a smile on my face. And, yeah. You know, it, yeah, it, it really it's seems true. that it's it's you know it, it's that directive. You know, it, it's not you know this thing of you know it would be nice for you to find joy. It would be you know a good thing. No, this is kind of a directive. You know, find it. Yeah. <laughs> right there <laughs> yeah it's right there just get out of the way cut your cords you know it's not for the like i say in the book it's not for the faint of heart you have to want to do some take an active role in your own self-healing right what, what do you think is probably the the number one thing or the top couple of things that are getting in the way of most people, generally speaking, of, of finding their joy? You know, what, what stops them from doing that? Well, again, you know, if you're clogged with the past, with the, with the past failures and the memories and all of that, you know, it can slow you down because you don't have the motivation to do it. It's frustrating. It's like, you know, going up a hill and dragging this huge sack of potatoes with you wherever you go, you get kind of tired of it. You know, you'd rather just pull the covers over your head and go back to sleep. Right. So you have to really have something push you or you push yourself and finally say, you know, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then you go take a walk or you, you know, you get out of yourself and just realize that if you just make one little shift or one little change, um, it can propel you you know, in a different direction, you know, just helping somebody out of their funk or, you know, just stop thinking of yourself and, and start relating to other people and feel how you're connected, how, how you can make somebody else laugh or how you can make somebody else smile. You have mm -hmm. a purpose. Everybody has a purpose. And just like you making this radio show available to other people, maybe someone will take note and you might save a life. Well, and, you know, the, that's a theory that took me many years of, of you know, working with people to, to come to that realization that it really is putting out yourself and, and what you can do to help another and then not always knowing if it's helping or not helping. And That's instead of focusing on the masses, you know, is there that one person who, who needs uh, whatever it is that we're doing or needs that message? Because um, I do believe in the domino effect. You, you change the one and then think of all the people that one is going to change and all the ones they're going to change and so on and so on. Well, and that's so true. And with this Ho'oponopono, when you make right, right, the forgiveness process, you can put anything down below you. You can put your government, you can put this election behind you, you can put everything that you're looking at that is taking your power away. And then you can cut the cords by saying those words, by forgiving yourself. And that image will change it will change and that other person or that other event will begin to heal or move to a higher level. So you right. can affect change with anything, you know, with, with um, terrorist groups, with governments, with, with everything. You can do your mm -hmm. part 
to see it differently, to look at well, it differently. Well, a big shift in perspective. Yes. You know, from and, and what I'm also hearing is that whole selflessness, you know, that it has got to be looking outside of myself, not self-focused. Right. Right. Because whatever you see outside comes from inside. It's just the projection goes out into the world. So if you're looking for bad, it you'll find it. it it'll be right there. Right. But if you change that, you know, and look for something good and clean that part of you that is projecting that, you begin to really see a whole different um, environment. Everything changes. Right. No, it, it's really is fascinating because, you know, for me, I, I can see how it would be difficult for people to start. But once you do it, it, it really can become – you know, like, like you're saying, you know, it's kind of your drug, your high, that, that you can enjoy life this much. And if more and more people could do that, how different our world would be. Well, and but they have to be ready. You know, it's like a butterfly coming out of its cocoon. You can't help it until it's ready to fly, until it has the right. strength in its wings to fly. So all of these, you know, things are helping people, and when they're ready – the door is open and they'll walk through it. And all you right. can do is point them in the right direction and then they have to choose. You know, we have that little thing called free will. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> yeah, and so and you can leave the horse that. water, but you can't make them drink, right? This is very true. And, and how frustrating it is when we try to make somebody drink. Um but, so but in, in I, looking, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say there's a lot of people who who receive benefits from from this healing work, and then they want to drag their sister and their brother to you, and they want your mother and everything, but it may not work with them because they're not ready. So right, it, it you know you always want to help the ones you love, and sometimes those are the ones that are going to be the the slowest coming to this realization sometimes. Right. Um, so, well, again, yeah, so you know, how would you sum this up? How would I sum it up? Well, that, you know, again, I'm just honored to be on your show and perhaps this simple message of self forgiveness can reach to some adults and children and teenagers that, you know, to look inside for answers because the answers are inside ourselves. And when we just say I'm sorry for something that comes up that we've had no control over, and then we just say I love you, meaning I love myself, I forgive you, I forgive myself, thank you, it's done, that we'll just start to feel better, you know, without having to take anything or you know, visit anybody or, you know, you can do it on your own. And it's it's a polishing. It's like brushing your teeth. Nobody brushes your teeth but you. You brush your teeth. You forgive yourself. And right. moving on just creates more leverage for you to um, create something that you've always wanted to create because now you have the energy to do that. You're not hampered by the stuff from the past. So in a sense, it's like you're saving money, um, the money inside of yourself that you get to tuck away when you need it for some big healing. I look at that as um, really like our energy is money. And so when you waste it on, you know, these other kinds of emotions that drag you down, you lower your bank account. Right. So I guess in a way it's like strengthening your your savings account and doing something wonderful for yourself and for all of us because we're all connected. That, that sounds wonderful, and I, and I love the analogy. You know, just the, that's something I think is very practical that you know we we can really hang on to and uh, you know hopefully take that advice and and start working on that savings account. Right, find your friggin' joy. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> So where where can uh, people find more uh, information about you and, and to be able to contact you? What would be the best way for them to do that? 
Well, my website is Huna Healing, and that's H U N A Healing, H E A L I N G dot com. And Huna means secret, so these are the secrets of the Kahunas that were never written down until a teacher, Max Freedom Long, came and kind of saw the miracles, and he started writing these books. So this is this is what I learned, how I learned how to do this healing, and I want to share it with everybody who's motivated to do their own self-healing. So hunahealing.com, and you'll get my 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 email address and telephone number and all the information on the dolphin trips and my CDs and just connecting. So thank you so much. Well, and I appreciate you, uh, you know, taking the time to be on the show. And, you know, I know that people are going to get a lot out of this. And I do encourage, uh, you know, people to go to that website, com to find your book, uh, which is also available on, you know, Amazon and Amazon. You know, other places. Um, but really to take the time to do that and to be able to find their own healing. So, uh, again, thank you very much and uh, appreciate your time. And uh, look forward to hearing more uh, about you. Mahalo. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.